Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to cut out hair in a more realistic manner and a believable manner. So I have my two photos open. This is the background that I want my figure to stand in front of. And this photo right here is the photo that I want to cut out. So you'll see when I zoom in, there's a lot of detail around the edges of his hair. So I'm going to show you that process. Now the easiest way is to not do it on a background layer. Okay, that's kind of hard. So I'm going to double click the background layer and I'll call this Jonah. And then I'm going to cut him out the way Hollywood cuts him out. And that's on a green screen. Like when you see them filming the characters for Star Wars or interacting with aliens, they cut them out on a green screen in the studio. So I'm going to come down and add a brand new layer. I'll come up to my color panel, pick a bright, bright shade of green up there in the upper right corner. And to fill out this brand new layer with my keyboard, it is option key and the big delete key. Now, obviously I can't have green covering up the kid. So I'm going to pull that below his layer. And the next most important step is to click on his layer because you're going to come over to your toolbox and the second tool down, if you press and hold, you have a quick selection tool. So I'm going to take this quick selection tool inside the boundaries of the figure. I'm not going to hit the white wall and I'm going to click and drag down through his hairline right here. And I'll come across the face, down into his shoulder area, and I'll kind of go back and forth across his shirt. If this brush tip is too small, I can hold my control key and my option key and drag to the right so I have a little bit bigger brush. And I'm going to click and drag back and forth across all the colors of the flag on his shirt. I'll drag through his shoulder. And then you got to keep in mind what the quick selection tool is making is a rough selection. Don't trust it to do a perfect job. And what I mean by that is when I take my zoom tool and zoom in on his right side of his collar, the quick selection tool cut right down through here, down through his neck. It didn't go around his collar. And that's because the white of the wall is very close to the light gray of his shirt. So the quick selection tool had a hard time distinguishing between those values. So I'm going to go back to my quick selection tool, hold control and option and make that brush tip a little smaller by dragging to the left. And now I can just bring it just inside the edges of his collar like that and drag around through his shirt. Drag a little bit right there. If I accidentally make a mistake and I drag out like that, I can hold Option or Alt on a PC for the minus and I can scrape off or subtract that mistake right there. There we go. And I like that selection. It's looking pretty good around his collar. Okay, the keyboard shortcut to zoom out and see the entire image on your screen is Command-0. And the main trick is you have to stay on your selection tool. So when you have a selection on your screen and you are on your quick selection tool, you have this button right up here called select and mask. So I'm gonna click that. That's gonna take me into the select and mask workspace here. And right over here on the right, you've got four sections. So I'm gonna start at the top, view mode. And I'm gonna click this pop-up I'm going to come all the way down to view him on layer. So this will show me what my figure would look like if I were to cut him out right now. And you can see up in his hairline, it looks terrible. It's like shampoo stuck in his hair. So I'm going to click right above the word view to turn off that list. And when you have loose or what they call flyaway hairs, you want to go to edge detection and activate that by turning on the smart radius button. Now keep in mind, just turning on this button won't do anything unless you give the radius a value. And I would recommend you just start at one pixel. Okay, down below, the next section is global refinements. 
Smooth is for corners on an object. I'm not going to deal with that. Feather means blur, and I don't want to blur the edge of this kid. Contrast is just the opposite of feather, and it already has a pretty good edge to it. I want shift edge, and I usually drag that to the left to about negative seven. That's going to slightly cut into the edges of the figure, making sure I don't leave any white pixels behind from the door that he was standing from in the first place. And then the last section is output settings. So I'm going to scrub down here and turn that on, decontaminate colors. And what that does is makes a smoother transitional edge between the edge of his hair and the background. So it'll look more believable when I drag him into a new photograph, like that colorful painting that we want to add him to. Okay, so once I set up everything on the right, I come way over here to the upper left and the second brush down is called the Refine Edge Brush Tool. If you look closely at that icon, it's got a couple little hairs flying off the brush. So this is for hairs. Now I'm going to take my Zoom Tool first. I'll start down below his ear and I'll click, click, click. So I zoom in for a little more detail. I'll come back to the Refine Edge Brush Tool. And that brush is way too small. So I'm going to hold my Control key and Option key and just go with a slightly bigger brush right there. One that I can actually see. And your main goal is to paint as little as possible in the hair, but you start outside. Because the more you paint into the figure, the more Photoshop is going to think you're trying to erase. So I might take out a chunk of his jaw. So I'm going to start out here. Click and drag now. I'm holding down the mouse. And then I go into the white areas. Paint, paint, paint. And then I let go. And Photoshop is going to catch up to me. It's going to find those little hairs. I'll click and drag again just to make sure I get any loose hairs out there. I'll start out here. Click and drag and drag and drag and then let go. And I'll see some of those loose hairs. So there's a lot of calculations that are happening here. So what I recommend is you do it small sections at a time. Now, part of this is on your screen, you're going to see it currently erasing some of the white. My graphics card might be a little slow, so it's not actually doing that. But your screen will actually look better than mine. So here's what I recommend again. The white areas are the parts in his hair that we don't want. So I start outside. I'm going to press down on my mouse and paint, paint into his hairline like that, and then let go out here. Let it catch up to me. All the calculations are taking place. And we'll see what we get here. There we go. So now I can see all those tiny little loose hairs. So I'm gonna do that as I go around his head, section by section. So I'll start out here, paint in over the white areas, paint back and forth out here, and then let go. Let Photoshop catch up to me. And I keep repeating that, there's a lot of calculations, so let Photoshop catch up to you. Don't try to do his entire head at once. So I'm gonna click and drag right in here, all this white. Paint over all this white right here, and then I'll let go, let it catch up. All the decontaminating is taking place around the edges of his head. I'll click and drag and paint and scrape out all this white right up in here, paint up in there, and then I'll let go. Again, let it catch up. Let it do all its calculations there. I can hold my space bar and push him over a little bit. I'll start out here, click and drag, and I'll paint and paint and paint and paint over all that white space and then let go. Let that do its catch up and calculations. And like I said, you're going to see it actively erasing on your screen as you do it. So I'm going to just click and drag. I kind of know that it's going to be doing those calculations. I'll just paint over the edges of his hairline there and let go. You will actually see it live as you paint. I'm going to come down here, click and drag and paint back 
back and forth and back and forth and back and forth over all this white paint back and forth around these missing hairs down here let it catch up see what that does and a lot of calculating going on here there we go and I'm gonna click and drag out here now I'm gonna paint and paint and paint I know there were some loose hairs right here that I forgot to select so I'll just keep going over that and then I'll paint over all this gray right here and then let go let the last of the calculations take place right here there we are and if I look by holding my space bar right over here on his jawline I'm gonna zoom in real close and you can see it actually started to erase some of his jaw. So the way you correct that is you take your same refine edge brush, but now I hold the option key for a minus. And I'm gonna scrape off the mistake right there. Let it calculate, hold option and scrape off this mistake while I paint. I'm holding option and we'll see what that does. And you can see it cleared up his jawline right there. If there's a couple little dark spots, I just hold option and paint right up the side of his neck. And that'll erase those little dark spots. Now I take my zoom tool. I can click and drag back to the left. And I've got a pretty good cutout of that hairline. Now I saw a little bit next to his ear over here. So I'm going to zoom back in and I don't know what that thing is. So I'm going to take my refine edge brush, just paint over that area one more time. There we go. I missed a little clump of hair there. And that's still not working. So I'm going to hold my option key and erase that right there. Okay, now I'm going to click and drag again right around the edge of his ear. Try and find more of that ear one more time. Option key and go back over that part so I don't clip away his earlobe and that's going to look pretty good so I'll take my zoom tool again we'll zoom back out and you know you want to go in and fine-tune little things I, I don't like that little spot right there so I'm going to come back in and just paint right there hopefully that'll catch that it's looking a little better paint one more time and I'll zoom back out there we go so now I got a pretty decent looking cutout here. So the last thing you want to keep in mind is at the very, very bottom, it says output to new layer with layer mask. So I'm going to click OK. And that basically turns off the original layer and gives me a copy with a layer mask. Just in case I accidentally deleted an earlobe or erased something, you could paint on the layer mask with white and bring it back, kind of correct your mistakes. but Here's the thing you gotta keep in mind. This is kind of a glitch in Photoshop. Whenever you use select and mask and you get the end result with a layer mask for some weird reason, Photoshop leaves behind a little pixel along the very outer edges of your photo. I don't know why it does that, but I know it does do that. So I'm gonna click on the right. I'm on my layer mask. I'm going to hit D for default colors and then X so I switch my color to black. Black is your eraser on a layer mask. And with my paintbrush, I'm going to hold control and option, drag to the right and down for a hard edge. And then I'm just going to paint, click and drag and drag and drag and scrape off that one little pixel right down to the edge of his shoulder there. Click and drag and scrape off that little pixel across the top. Even though you don't see it, trust me, that pixel is there. Click and drag down the side and erase those little one pixel edges right down to his sleeve there. And that will guarantee that I have gotten rid of those little white pixels around the very outside edge. Okay, when you're done with the layer mask, you don't need to keep it. So you click once on it, come down to the trash on your layers panel and click. 
and you say apply. That means permanently erase what the layer mask has erased. So now I have a perfect cutout of this kid. I want the kid to come up to this painting. So I'm going to go back to the kid on my move tool. I'll just put it right on his forehead. Click and drag all the way up. Wait a second. Drag him back in. Then I let go of the mouse. And if he's too big, which he obviously is, I can hit Command and Minus. Command T to transform. And I'll just drag the upper right corner and pull him down like that. I can move him back in and we'll line him up on the left side right there and down across the bottom. And there we go. He fits in the scene. So just remember, anytime you are done transforming, you have to hit return to accept it. I will zoom back in on his hairline here. And we've got a nice, believable cutout of hair around the edges of this kid. He stands in the new scene in a more believable manner. Now, if I want to give a little more depth or whatever, I could go to the background layer and go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And I'll just crank this up to about 20. And that just softens out the background a little bit so our foreground figure has contrast. Click OK. Zoom back in so you can see that. You got a nice sharp edge to your foreground figure. Your background's kind of fading out. And we have a believable extraction of our figure to work on our Photoshop files. So there you go. I'll see you in the next video.